Cool. Well, it looks like it's about that time. So uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Spencer. Um, I'm the chief product officer here at chronometer.com. And thank you guys for joining uh, me today. I also have uh, as a, a, a panelist here, um, Mary Ev. Uh, she's going to be answering questions and stuff in the chat that I can't necessarily get to. Um, so I have a quick uh, presentation it, uh, for you guys, and then we'll get to your questions, and I'll kind of go through different parts of the app. Hopefully, we'll get everything answered by the end of the hour. So, so what are we going to cover today? So, I have a quick um, introduction uh, that I want to get through, a little bit of housekeeping, and uh, I'm going to kind of frame the discussion that we're going to have today about the app. And after that, we're going to do a screen-by-screen -screen demo of all of our features. And uh, we're going to focus on the areas where you guys are going to be spending most of your time in the app. So that's, you know, logging your food, creating custom foods and recipes, and then the, the data analysis side of things too. And, and just before that, I'll show you some of the little setup tricks that you, may got, that you guys may want to do, depending on what type of program you're trying to follow. I'm going to put some emphasis on the gold features that we offer uh, so you guys know what you have access to. Uh, now that you're you're using our gold um, our gold subscription, and then as as we go along, I usually will get to any leftover questions at the end. But as I go through the app, feel free to post questions up into the Q and A section, and I'll probably answer them as we go along in the relevant section. Um, and that is that. So okay, uh, a couple little bits of housekeeping as well. So we don't give personalized nutrition advice. So any personal, any kind of personal um, questions about you know what you should be doing or anything like that, I'm not going to cover in this webinar. Um, you can work with a healthcare professional to answer those questions. And in fact, we actually have a professional directory of a number of healthcare professionals that use Chronometer in their practice, and I'll show you how to access that or where to go uh, if you are looking for those types of answers. Um, on top of that, I'm not going to deal with feature requests uh, in, in this webinar. However, at the end, um, there will be a survey you guys can uh, fill out, and there is going to be space for telling us what you guys would like to see in the app, and we would love to hear that too. So um, feel free to, to let us know then. Um, the other thing is there's going to be questions that uh, appear in the queue for you guys. Um, I think there's a little Q&A button on the, on the webinar UI that you can open up. Uh, you can vote for questions you want to see answered, and I'll always go in order of, of highest votes. So um, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Um, so if you see a question you like, hit the like button, and uh, it'll get answered. Um, yeah, if you have any follow-up questions, um, oh yeah, I just see Mary have posted our chrono uh, Chronometer Pro directory up in the uh, in the chat. So definitely follow that link and check it out if you're interested. Um, yeah, follow up questions. Go to support at chronometer.com. We'll answer anything. Um, you know, we have a great, uh, we have a great support team and they'll be pretty prompt in their responses to you guys. And yeah, anybody who's interested in watching a replay or wants to share it with, uh, with anyone, uh, I post replays usually by the end of the week. I just got to do a little editing and, and throw it on up there to our YouTube channel. Um, you can just search chronometer. It's the first thing that comes up. And also, so this webinar is going to be focused more heavily on the gold features, but we just started, uh, it's going to, it's actually starting next week. We're going to be doing a, um, a chronometer basics webinar uh, for not only gold users, but for free users too. Uh, so you guys can come on and we'll usually cover a topic. Maybe it'll be focused on one screen, like the diary screen or creating custom foods and recipes. We might, depending on how much time we have, cover a topic or two. But that's going to be a weekly webinar that we do on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern time. I'm just going to post the link up here. So you can use that link to register for that webinar. And that's going to be the same link any week uh, that you want to join. You can use that link to join. So, yeah, that's a new thing. Hopefully uh, that, that uh, helps uh, you guys learn the software. Uh, let's see what else we got. Yeah, so I want to frame our discussion around this question. You know, why chronometer? Why use chronometer to try to achieve your health and nutrition goals, uh, other, you know, when there's all the other apps that are out there? You know, chronometer has the highest quality, most accurate data of any of the apps that are out there. We track over 80 micronutrients, and we do that by using a ton of different high-quality databases, but we also employ our own curation team 
that make sure our data is, is uh, free of errors and anything that is uh, you know, visible to the user is, is, uh, meets our standards. And so we really care about that data quality and we wanna make sure that you guys have the best, most accurate data for whatever goal that you wanna, that you wanna do, uh, that you wanna achieve. Um, and we also build out, we, the app is built around a foundation of nutrition, micronutrition information. Um, and uh, because of that, we have a whole, we've built a whole bunch of uh, data analysis tools in the app in order to make sense of all that data. Because there's, like I said, 80 micronutrients nutrients is a lot to keep track of. And uh, you know, I know I don't know the functions of every single one, but we have a ton of interesting data analysis tools, which I'll show you, that'll help you make sense of what's happening day to day as you log your food. Um, and then be, again, because we're focused on that micronutrition, unlike any other app, uh, you're going to be able, you're going to find that chronometer is customizable to any kind of eating plan. So if you're vegan, if you're keto, and anywhere in between, we have you covered because the building blocks of health uh, via diet is this micronutrition data that we specialize in tracking. Um, and finally, we're secure. So um, we have, a, uh, we have a, a view here at Chronometer that you, the user, own your own data uh, at any point. So we never sell your data to third parties. Uh, at any point, you can go in and delete your data from our system and that's it. We don't have, we don't retain it. And, you know, we use end to end encryption. We follow uh, the HIPAA guidelines, GDPR compliant, all that, uh, because we have such an emphasis on your security. Um, so yeah, that's just one of our big principles that I wanted to share. Now we also, like I mentioned, uh, there's a professional version of the app. You'll see some of the pros that use it in our professional directory, but these are a few of the larger organizations that use chronometer in a professional setting. Um, because they trust our data. And the uses range from everything from, uh, you know, having, uh, running their patients through uh, a nutrition program in a hospital to academic and clinical research in, in hospitals and universities. And so, uh, you know, we're really proud to be partnered with some of these organizations. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great uh, experience for us so far. So that's the end of my slides. I'm just going to jump right in here to the minimize that to the demo and I'm going to show you guys things on both the mobile and the web app. So just pardon me here while I get set up. Okay. So cool. So what we're looking at here, just go, I'll just kind of briefly mention some of the, um, you know, main parts of, the app. Uh, so up top here, you have your food log. Um, one of the gold features that you have access to right away is going to be, <laughs> that's my daughter in the background, if you can hear that. Um, so uh, anyway, we have, um, uh, we have a feature that you, we turn on automatically when you actually upgrade to gold, and that is the, uh, the, the groupings that you hear, the diary groups that you see here. Um, the way you access that is by clicking on this three dot menu up here and going to diary settings. And this allows you to create up to eight groups that you can customize. So it's gonna pop me over to the settings tab here. Settings, display. If we scroll down, we can see the highlighted, oh no, where is it? Oh, diary groups right up top here. Um, so you can turn that on. It'll get turned on automatically when you upgrade. Uh, and then you can come in here and you can actually customize any of these groups. So you can choose which ones you want to display by clicking the check mark here. And then, so I'll leave that on, you can see the change. And then you can actually come in here and change what you want uh, this to say. So you can change the title, customize that. Um, and you, in addition, you can actually choose uh, if you have a device that you um, import data from, so like a Fitbit or a Garmin or something like that, you can choose uh, which group that uh, device imports data to. So you can just see that change here. If I didn't actually change right there. Go back to diary. And yeah, so you can see here that I've you know, my name updated and that group that I had enabled is now here as well. So that's one of the first gold features you might notice when you are, um, when you are, uh, up, when you first upgrade to gold. Um, and same thing, so I'll just show you on the mobile app 
have these things here. These groups are actually on the mobile app. These groups are collapsible. I can quickly uh, tap the arrows here to expand or collapse those things. And also you notice, you'll notice here that there's a green plus button um, in the, uh, on the, on the left here. What you can do with that, that's a quick way to add an item directly to, let me see if I have an empty group here. Yeah, so if I go to daily, uh, yeah, daily supplements, I can hit the plus button. And if I quickly choose an item, I'll add that. Now it's just showing up in that group. You can do that on the web as well, just by clicking a group and then, oops, and then clicking add food. And that'll allow you to just pop something in there real quick if you want. So uh, this is the food log. Um, so if we scroll down just a bit, then we have our widgets here. Uh, we have the calorie summary widget, which just shows you your caloric deficit for the week, plus your calories consumed and the calories burned. Um, and you can, you can see that remaining budget here, depending on what your weight goal is. And we'll get to some setup stuff in just a minute. Um, and then you can also see your macronutrient targets here. You're gonna see all your contributors, all the things that, all the food items that you've logged for the day will show up just by mousing over these items. Now here's, this is really what I wanted to get to. Just below we have the nutrient target section. We just released a gold feature that I think probably most of you guys have seen. Um, and this is called uh, nutrition scores. So a lot of us don't really think of nutrition in terms of individual micronutrients and their functions. I know I don't. And, but what we do think of nutrition as is, you know, those higher concepts like, you know, recovery, uh, you know, uh, supporting your immune system, something that's pretty important these days. Um, what we've done is we've actually taken a whole, a, a number of subsets of nutrients, micronutrients, and group them according to function so that you can actually see how well you're supporting these specific health concepts through your nutrition. And so one way to do it, so you can check these out by looking at, um, so I'll click on immune support here. You can see I'm at 95%. What you're seeing here are all the nutrients that contribute to, uh, to this particular concept. And so this is all based on um, pretty well-established research. And we're going to be expanding these scores too. So we're going to be doing things like, you know, training recovery, uh, vegan critical nutrition, things like that. Those are all coming. But for now, we have, I think, like seven or eight of these different scores you can display here that will give you an idea how you're doing at a high level uh, with your nutrition day to day. Um, and you can always check out some more in, you know, some more in-depth information on how we score this stuff with our, you know, by clicking the user manual links here. So then we've got down here the highlighted nutrition scores and the uh, all the individual micronutrients in, their, in various categories. You know, you guys are probably familiar with this at this stage, but again, you know, you can come in here, you can see all, you, all the things that are contributing to a specific nutrient. And if you work with a healthcare professional and you want to set like a, a custom score, you can actually click on one of these things. And you can see here, you've got a daily target, maximum threshold. And when you're in the green, that's good. Uh, if you want to customize that range, you can actually enable this custom values here and then you can edit these fields and that'll allow you to uh, create, you know, create a custom range. So, you know, if you want more of something or less, obviously consult a healthcare professional if you're making some serious modifications to this though. So then down below, if you guys get this far in the day when you're looking at your diary, so we have a nutrient balances. Now this is another gold feature. So what this does, is it shows you where you are in with with some specific nutrient ratios that are important to everyday health so the most obvious one being the omega-3 to 6 ratio and we have a, a set ratio here based on the research and we can tell you how close you are to that when you're in the green you're good um, and we have a couple options to customize those which i'll show you in a minute now on the mobile app so all this information is just on the diary on the web. But on the mobile app, we've got a way to look at that information. So you can see I have my food log here. Um, but what I can do, so we kind of encapsulate these widgets up top here. Just with this top area, you can kind of swipe through that. Now, if you want to tap 
one of these widgets, you're going to get your contributors for, I think I clicked, I tapped on protein here. Um, I'll see all the, uh, the targets and everything. If I click on daily or tap on daily report down here, what's going to happen is I'm going to be taken to my daily nutrition summary. And everything you see at the bottom of the screen here on the, on the web side of things is going to be available on mobile here. So you're going to get a view of your um, daily micronutrition on that screen. Now, one thing I'll note is that we don't have nutrition scores on mobile yet. That's going to be coming in the next couple months. Uh, we were excited about it, so we wanted to get it out on web as quick as possible. So let's see. So another gold feature that I wanted to point out to you guys, and it often gets missed, uh, is the, where is it? Oh, here we go the suggest foods button. So a lot of times we have some trouble figuring out what we need to eat, uh, especially to get all of our nutrition targets um, as high as possible. So we have a feature called suggest foods and I'll just click on that here to give you an idea of what it does. Essentially, all foods, essentially what it does is it looks at your current daily nutrition. As a matter of fact, let me do this. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and delete my. I'm going to delete my dinner, and delete my snacks. So what you can see down below is I still have a whole bunch of. I'll delete those too. What you're going to see down below here is I still have a ton of space for my daily caloric intake and uh, my macros. So you can see here, I have protein, I still need quite a bit, fat, I still need quite a bit. So what Suggest Foods does, and also there's a whole bunch of uh, micronutrients that now aren't, aren't filled, I haven't hit my targets yet. So what we do, what the app does, is it takes all of that into account. So when I click on it, it's gonna recommend foods in our database that will best fill out those nutrition score or those nutrition targets. So your macros, your micros, everything is going to be taken into consideration. So here are some of those suggestions. So obviously I need a bunch of protein and I need a bunch of fat. So what comes up? Foods high in protein and high in fat. So you can see here, uh, so the, the red and the, um, the green, that's the um, macros, but also in the middle here, that purple gauge is how much of your um, uh, total nutrition target percentage will be filled just by eating the amount of the food here. So this is great. I can just add this to my diary if I want, just by clicking this button. I can uh, like the food, so it'll show up in my suggestions uh, more regularly. And um, if you don't like it, you can, you can say no and it won't show up again. And if you just want to cycle through a bunch of different suggestions, you can just click the X a number of times here. And we'll just keep loading them up. Uh, everything, you know, as, as large as our database is, you won't run out of suggestions. So the other thing you can do here, <clears throat> you notice I had it set to vegan only. Uh, you can search vegan only foods. You can search vegetarian only foods too, if you have those particular dietary restrictions. In addition, you can, you can filter on specific allergens like seafood, nuts, dairy, and you can exclude supplements as well. I also, if you have a bunch of custom foods and recipes in here, you can, uh, you can uh, filter those out too, if, in case you want like whole foods or something like that, um, or foods from our database specifically. Now, the thing about this feature is that, I don't know about you, but if, if I'm looking for something to eat, chances are I don't have a bunch of chicken liver in my fridge. So what I recommend to you, the, the way I recommend using this, one way I recommend using this feature is to really help plan out your meals in the future. So one of the things I'm going to show you is a trick to actually build out whole meal plans um, that will help you just make logging way easier for you day to day. Um, you know, we're talking just a few clicks, you'll have your whole meal for the day logged. Um, and this is a really good planning tool to figure out what you need or what you might be want you might want to shop for next week in order to really hit your nutrient your nutrition targets so um so yeah so that's one that's another one of our gold features really cool one in my opinion um definitely take the time to check it out okay <clears throat> so what do we got next and you'll notice okay so one of the other gold features that you guys now have access to is uh 
the fasting feature. So uh, I'll show you how to turn this on in a second when we get to it. It's in one of the settings tabs that I'll show you. Uh, but what you can do is you can actually start tracking your fasts. And we do that um, by allowing you to just turn on fasting. You can set a certain uh, interval so it repeats every day, every other week, however long you want it to, or however often you want it to repeat, it can do that. And also what's really cool is if uh, when we get to our charts feature, you're going to see that you can actually visualize your fasting periods on, uh, on the charts. So it's a really cool way to look at how the fasts are affecting different biometrics or, your, or uh, anything that you're tracking. Cool. So I think, let's see, there's a couple other minor ones that I want to just cover on this one. Oh yeah, not to neglect the mobile app. So one of the things we can do on the mobile app, so Suggest Foods is what I just showed you guys. If you go to, so Suggest Food is right here. I'll just use my now. So Suggest Food is right here. So you're going to get the same suggestions that you would um, from our thing here. And it's just going to look a little bit different. Um, so yeah, you see one thing at a time. I'll scroll through here. You can see, I can just see one, one thing at a time and tap that X button if I want to uh, remove it and get some new suggestions. Up top here in the three, with this three dot menu, uh, that, that, that's where you can um, access all the uh, exclusions and dietary restrictions I described earlier. Cool. Um, now a couple, yeah. So like I said, another couple features that I want to show you guys. So, um, in order to, so one of the gold features, little convenience feature here, if you've had a really good day of eating or just a really good meal that you want to save and maybe log again the next day <clears throat> or, you know, whatever the case may be, you can highlight a number of different items here. And that's just done by shift, uh, holding down shift and clicking each item that you want to highlight. Um, and then right click on it. You're gonna have an option here called create recipe from selected items. And this is a really easy way to just, just click that here. And now we're taken to the recipe editor and all the things that I had highlighted in, in the diary are now added as ingredients in the recipe editor. And this is, like I said, very easy way to kind of just capture a good meal or a good day of eating and you know throw it in a recipe so you can easily log it in the future. Now we'll get to recipe creation in a little uh, in a little bit later, because um, there, again there's some cool tricks there that I want to show you. Um, so let's see uh, the other feature that I want to show you guys is we have a feature called Mark Day Complete. So if you guys have a real again that really good day of eating that's representative of the program that you're following, um, <clears throat> and uh, the um, and you just want to, you know, that's, it's, it's going to be a good sample of, uh, sorry, I was reading the question there on the, on the thing that popped up. Uh, it's just going to be a good sample that you want to use for like charting and kind of analyzing your data. You can mark that day as complete. What it'll do is it'll prevent you from adding new things to the diary. And it's just a way, it's going to be a further filter you can apply on the, uh, on the charts feature, which I'll show you in a second. I'm just going to mark that incomplete. Um, Another one is, oh, you'll notice, yeah, so we actually, for all you, uh, all the gold users can timestamp their data. So when you log a food, I'll show you what that looks like in a sec, uh, you can actually uh, edit the, the time for uh, any item here. So if you're logging biometrics, maybe you're logging blood glucose, where timing really does matter. Uh, when you're logging your food, we'll take the current time and apply that. And you can always edit the food after the fact, or edit, edit, edit the time after the fact uh, to, you know, coordinate when you actually ate it, if you're logging, say, at the end of the day. So on the add food dialog, see here, I'll just pick one of our items. Uh, yeah, you can see up here, we have time of day. I can choose what that time should be. And just by clicking on it, if I don't want to log a time, I can just uncheck that. And then uh, I can also choose the diary group that that is going in to here. Um, and oh, and just because we're here and it's fun, for those of you who don't know, you can actually mark foods as favorites. Uh, this is a, available to everybody, but if you click the star here, uh, you're gonna see uh, this food, oops, this food show up in your favorites tab in the search 
uh, when you're in the search dialog and all the, um, all the foods I've marked as favorite. So if you're doing something over and over, or if you're logging the same foods over and over, this is a great way to organize those foods so that you can just access them really quickly. Um, cool. So let me see. Yeah, uh, I'll get to that one. So let's see. Um, what else? There was one other feature, I think. I think we also, so a lot of times, if you guys aren't aware, one of the things you can do, I'm just going to go to a day in the future here. One of the things you can do, if you're logging the same food over and over, um, you can go to this three dot menu up top here and select copy previous day. What that'll do is it'll take everything from the previous day and put it in the current day, or the day that you're on. And then what you can do, there's another convenience feature here called clear amounts. So obviously you may not eat the, even though you might be eating the same thing, that amount might differ uh, each day. So you can hit clear amounts here and it'll reset everything to zero. So then instead of having to log every, say, everything over again, going through that flow, that search dialog, you can actually go and set everything to zero and then just click on each of these things here to change the amounts. And if you need to change the um, serving size, it's just a matter of clicking on the unit column here and it'll give you an, the ability to, to do that in the diary UI instead of having to search things all over again. So on the mobile app, so obviously space is a concern here. So we've done a much different menu system here that I wanna sh show you guys in case you don't know. This isn't necessarily gold specific, but it's gonna give you an idea of how to access all the stuff that I just showed you on the web. So uh, let's take a look here. So first in the top, uh, the three dot menu, this is where you're gonna access most of this stuff. So you're gonna see the same kind of options, mark day is complete, uh, daily report, copy current day, copy previous, clear all amounts, like I just showed you, and delete all so you can delete the day. Um, but multi-select here is the option that I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna tap multi-select. <clears throat> now every item here in my diary has these orange boxes next to it. So what I can do here is I can select any number of items and then I'll tap that three dot menu again and it's gonna give me another, uh, another menu that I can then perform some actions on the items that I've selected. So for example, here is the create recipe from selected items that I showed you on the web. You can access that here. Uh, you can also copy those selected items. <clears throat> and if you wanna see the nutrition summary just from the items that you've selected, you can do that here as well. Uh, so just hop over, you can see it's only gonna show you the ones that I've selected. So a subset of your daily nutrition. Okay, and yeah, I don't actually want to delete anything. So that's one way to access different um, options uh, for a kind of a group of items on your diary. The other way, oh, and you, just, you can just tap that, let's see, multi-select. And if you to exit multi-select mode, you can just tap this back button. So the other way to do that <clears throat> for individual items, you can swipe right to reveal this, um, this three dot menu, this blue three dot menu. If I tap that, it's gonna give me a, a, a small menu where I can copy that item, I can look at the nutrition summary for that item, or I can delete it. Um, likewise, on the group, you can actually go swipe right on the group, and then you're gonna get the same um, options that I showed you uh, for when you highlight multiple items. So you can, again, create a recipe, you can copy, you can show the nutrition summary for like, in this case, for your lunch, uh, and you can delete it there too. Um, another little trick is to, oops, is to swipe left and you're gonna get the delete function. Just delete it like that. And yeah, so there, there are some, that's some of the um, kind of like, a little, little more hidden options you have on the, uh, on the mobile app. And it's just way easier if you, if you know some of that stuff uh, to just log your food and things like that. So uh, one other difference that may not be uh, obvious at first on the mobile app too, that I wanna show you. So actually I'm just gonna delete everything in my lunch here. So check this out. So what I'm gonna do, 
I've chosen my lunch. I'm going to go to add food. So I'm going to go to add food. I'm going to go to this icon up here. This is the filters icon. So what you're going to see here is um, the filters that I showed you earlier. Um, Oh, actually, you know, we haven't gone over searching in this particular webinar. So, um, yeah, so we have a whole bunch of filters for you to use on the mobile app. These are also available on the web. But the one I want to focus on here is going to be enable multi-add. So this is one of the ways that we try to save effort when, we, when we're logging food. Um, you can enable this multi-add feed option. And now what you see in your search list here um, is, again, those orange check boxes. So what I can do is I can come in here and I can check a bunch of these and then I'm going to go ahead and hit add to diary. And in one, just in a couple of taps, I've added all these things to my diary and we remember the last amount that you used. Um, so you can actually come in here and edit those if you need to. Um, but we can, you can quickly add the foods that you most often log to your diary using that option. So it's super convenient. Um, all right, let's see. So then, uh, yes, biometrics, right. So for those of you who are, who are tracking biometrics, maybe you're tracking different blood levels or something like that for a medical condition or blood glucose or anything, um, anything like that, we have the ability to create custom biometrics. So you may have noticed the metrics that we have out of the box, um, a pretty decent number here, but there's a ton that you can track. Maybe you want to track symptoms, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how bad were your symptoms today? You know, or it could be anything. What we allow you to do, if you don't see something that you want to track in our biometrics, you can go click on this green plus button and you can actually create a custom biometric. And so what that looks like is just typing in a title and a unit. So again, on the, in the case of say the symptoms, I could be uh, a scale. And so now all I have to do is say, maybe that scales one to 10, so it was a four today. And I can add that here. And so that's how you can, you can create any kind of bi uh, biometric that you want for your, um, for your purposes. And those will be available to you right away. And they won't be seen by anybody else. And uh, it's just kind of personal biometrics there. And then as you start tracking those things, we're going to be able to, uh, to uh, tr uh, graph those on our charts, which I'll show you. Uh, I guess I'll show you that now. And then we'll get to some of the more kind of advanced tricks that we do in the app for you. Um, let's see. So if we go to trends. Oh, and just to note, um, you cannot create custom biometrics currently on the mobile app. So that's a feature that we're gonna be adding there soon. Uh, it's just not there now. So if you do wanna create a custom biometric, you do have to come to the, uh, the web app. So if we go to trends, um, you're gonna see a whole bunch of different charts here uh, that display your data over time. Um, and so what we're looking at is uh, let's see. This first chart is calories consumed. So what this does is it gives you a visual um, breakdown of the calories and the macros, total calories and the macro breakdown of the foods that you've been eating. Um, and so you know, you'll notice these darkened bands here. That's the fasting feature. So I have a long uh, kind of... <laughs> probably a little too long for to be practical, but I have a, a very long history of fasts on this um, and often uh, on this account. So you can see that there's quite a lot of dark, you know, dark in time here. So, um, but we will, you know, as you can see, we kind of show that as it uh, occurs in the, in the, um, in the timing of the, the charts. Uh, so I'm going to turn that off just because it's kind of distracting at the moment. So yeah, so you have a whole bunch of different options. If you're a gold user, you can set pretty much any uh, time frame here. As long as there's data, we can display it. Um, you can set custom ranges as well. And you can see how your caloric intake is changing over time. Um, and this, the time thing goes, the time options are available on any chart. Um, you also have this uh, ability to filter out days. So like I said before, you have completed days, which you can filter. Those are days that you have specifically flagged in the diary. Uh, you can also filter out non-empty days. So, you know, I'm sure not everybody tracks everything every day, 
So this is an easy way to filter out those empty days where you didn't track. Uh, and then over here, you have a three dot menu and that allows you to download a, um, some graphic files of these graphs. You can also download the raw data of any of our graphs too. So that includes timestamp data, amounts, different things like that for the different graphs. So if you wanna do some advanced statistical analysis on this stuff, you can, if that's your thing. It's more, this is one of those features that are, is more for our clinical researchers and things like that. Um, right, so our next chart is our biometric chart. So these first two charts, are part of our free account, but they don't, I don't think they have the same, uh, you, won't, you won't be able to graph as long of a history uh, on the free account. So the gold, uh, the gold feature here is really the expanded timeframes. But the, and then you get a whole other set of charts as well, which I'll show you in just a second. So again, with our biometrics charts, you can uh, show any, you can graph any chart or any biometric that we have data for, including your custom biometric. So you'll get those things over time and you're gonna notice it's organized by time as well. So again, if you're uh, tracking things like blood glucose, things that where the timing really matters, you can check that out here. We'll just turn on fasting for fun. Yeah, there you go. So you can get that on any graph as well. So uh, then the next chart, and this is the first of several gold, gold account only charts um, is your uh, your individual micronutrient chart. So it's, it's not necessarily micronutrients only. We graph pretty much everything. Anything that we track here, you can, you can graph. Um, and if it has a target range, it'll display that target range visually here. And you can see very easily what days you're hitting that range and what days you're not. Um, and if it has multiple units, you can change that here. And those scores that I showed you earlier, the scores that are kind of giving you the idea, you know, of like, how am I supporting my immune system? Those high level health concepts, you can graph those here too, because, you know, it may not be every day that you're hitting the, you know, your preferred score on each of those, uh, each of those graphs. So you can see that change over time here as well. Uh, the glucose ketone index, this is a chart that we worked with some medical professionals to develop. It's really for a ketogenic diet and um, tracking the thera uh, therapeutic, um, uh, being in the therapeutic kind of range for a ketogenic diet. Probably not applicable to everybody, but it is an option if that's something you're doing. Um, so these next couple charts, so ketones and weight, weight and blood glucose, um, these are all charts that I have created myself. And so one of these, uh, one of the features that we have as part of your gold account is if you go up here to manage charts, you're gonna see a bunch of the charts that we have out of the box. So again, if you're logging data for these things, we'll, we'll be able to graph it. Um, but if you want to create a custom chart, you can come down here. And I think, uh, Roman, your question was, let me see, this is probably relevant to that. So I'm just gonna read your question out loud. Hopefully the description here will answer it. Um, so is it possible to create a graph for a macronutrient, uh, for macronutrient consumption over time? Uh, y axis equals carbs, X axis is time. So yes is the answer. Um, I think consolidated carb consumption. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure what you mean then by macronutrient consumption over time. Um, if that's different, than how it's different than consolidated. Are you talking about like timestamps for each micronutrient? Maybe we don't do that. I'm not quite sure. Um, but if you can rephrase the question, hopefully this description here will answer how you can graph that. Anyway, so what you can do is you can create two different axes. Uh, you can choose a biometric, a nutrient, or a score, one of the scores that I showed you. And then you can graph those things together. So let's go look at electrolytes and how that affects my weight. And I can choose a unit there. And then what will happen is now I have that electrolytes plus weight chart. Let's go down and look at it. Go back to charts. I can scroll down to the bottom here. And here is my electrolytes plus my weight. And you can get a sense for how those things are changing together. Um, and, uh, and yeah. Oh, actually, so Roman, I think it's possible that, I think it's possible to do what you're asking. 
uh, but you'd have to download the raw data for the chart. Um, let me think about that because that's actually to get to that level of detail, you might, it's, it's not standard, I think in our charts. So I think there's a way to do it. It might take me a little bit to, to think about, but I don't want to interrupt the flow of things right now. So I'll come back to you on that. So anyway, uh, the next couple tabs here in the trends. Oh yeah. Sorry. So we have the nutrition reports this is the next feature. This is one of the other kind of major data analysis feature that we have. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's the other um, data analysis feature that we have here. What you can do is you're going to get a view very similar to your uh, daily diary view in the app, uh, like on the diary. And but what this does is it allows you to take a look at longer term nutritional averages. So we're looking here at about a month worth of time, a month's worth of time, and you can see how well you're doing on those nutrition scores, on your individual micronutrients, your macros, all that information is laid out here because over, you know, ultimately the long, those long term nutritional averages are what really matter. This is where you can spot those deficiencies or potential deficiencies. Um, you know, in, in your diet, particularly over longer periods of time. Um, the next option, these both print report here and snapshots, they're both gold features. So print report is a way to create a consolidated kind of document of a number of different charts, um, a number of different charts that uh, you can then again, create a physical document and actually share with someone. So if you have a healthcare practitioner that doesn't use chronometer, you can actually um, take that and create a whole a big report and give it to them and show them what chronometer is showing you. So I have already, so I've just basically enabled a whole bunch of different options just to show you what it looks like. Um, they're all pretty self-exclamatory. It's just picking the charts you want to show, picking the data from your diary you want to show. And it'll also generate a nutrient report, a nutrition report, sorry, uh, for the time frame that you've selected up here. So if we go to print report, here's the document that comes up. So you can see here's my kind of, you know, seven day nutrient report. And then down below, I have all my charts that I want to show. And then I can also, then it, I actually have the option selected that I can show everything from my daily diary. So my food log, my nutrition, everything. So it'll, it'll just go on and on through those seven days that I selected. Cool. Now, uh, before I go any further, I just want to show you guys how to do some of this on the, I'll put a pin in this, I guess. So snapshots is the next feature. Um, this is uh, where you can upload photos, progress photos, photos of your food. Uh, it's just a way to you know, create, uh, you know, create a little bit of a, or upload some images here. Um, Wendy, I see that you raised your hand. I don't know why. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. If, if you have a question, please, um, please uh, just type it up in the, in the questions queue or, or the chat and we can address it. Um, <laughs> that totally threw me off. I apologize, guys. So anyway, so you can upload those things here and, uh, you know, uh, however, you can use it however you like. Uh, those are two gold features. These two, the print report and snapshots, only available on the web at the moment. Now, um, on the mobile app, if you jump over to trends, you can see the charts here, just like you saw on the, uh, on the web. Now, if I tap one of these charts, I'm gonna kind of get a zoomed in view. And one of the things that's really cool is you can turn your phone to the side and you can get a, a much kind of, you know, for the screen, a much better view of that chart. You can kind of tap on the various areas here, and then, yeah, you can get a sense of what that looks like. And down below, you actually have access to all those options that I showed you guys before. I don't believe, yeah, we don't allow you to download documents on the mobile app. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense there. So um, to do that, you'd have to be on the web. And then if you go to nutrition report up top here, we can show you that um, all of your uh, nutritional averages over that time span. And we have a three dot menu up here that'll give you access to those options um, for your nutrition report. So, cool. 
Okay, let's see, where are we at? Um, what gold features am I missing? So, hey, Mary, I'm going to go into the, um, the custom foods and meal planning for a second, but let me know if there are any gold features that I've forgotten. I'm, I feel like there are because there's so many of them. But uh, Yeah, I can't think of any right now, Spencer, but... Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm being thorough here. We have so many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, cool. So here's what I'm going to show you guys next. So um, you, both of you, uh, you guys are probably familiar with creating custom foods and recipes. Um, one of the gold features that we have around custom foods and recipes is being able to share your um, recipes and your custom foods with other users. So if you have someone else that you know. Um, uh, yeah, so just uh, j just jumping back here on the um, snapshots feature, I saw a question come in. Uh, snapshots feature, will the photos be securely stored? Yeah, so we, like I said, we use end, end encryption. Uh, these, these, these photos won't be accessed uh, by anybody but you, um, uh, by, by your account. So if, there's, if you have any specific questions about the security side of things, we can, uh, we can address those. But uh, for the most part, yeah, we we're, we take our security very seriously. Okay, um, yeah, so we are jumping to foods. Okay, so on the foods tab, we have the ability to create custom foods and custom recipes. So we're going to start with custom foods. So custom foods are like standalone things, like broccoli, like uh, food with a barcode that you buy from the store. Those are individual things that might be an ingredient for a recipe down the road, but the foods are just kind of those individual items in our database, the things that you want to log. Now, uh, what I want to show you first is on the mobile app. If you have a food with a barcode, I highly recommend using our mobile app because we have a barcode scanner here. You can see that right here. And what I'm going to do is I just have to grab, yeah, so we'll do. So, I'm going to hit the barcode scanner. I'm going to scan a random barcode. So now what you're seeing here, if, so if that barcode was recognized as a food item in our database, you'd get the food item just like you would in any other search. But it didn't, it, this barcode did not match a food item in our database. So uh, what it does is it gives you the option to you know, try a new search or create a new, uh, a new food item, a custom food. So I'm going to tap create new. And the first thing that you're going to see here is the uh, option to take pictures. Um, this is really cool because it's so convenient. What happens is I'm going to show you the guys this live. I'm just going to go ahead and take a picture of the nutrition label of this food here. Cool. Let me just take a, some random photo of the, um, of the front. Now what's really cool is you'll notice that there's this little bit of text here says autofill successful. So normally when you're creating a custom food you're going to have to enter that stuff manually but if you do it on the mobile app and you can take a picture of that nutrition label um, you're going to see, I'll just scroll down here, yeah you see the serving name, the serving weight, the uh, all the nutrition uh, information from that label is imported automatically so you don't have to type it out which is just super convenient when you're logging foods like this. Um, so this is how, if it has a barcode, I would highly recommend creating food, okay? Now, if that's not an option and you wanna log something um, individually or, or without a, without a uh, barcode, what you would do is you go to the custom food editor, you click add food, and you can create a title you can create a, you know, you can list a category here, which helps with the search algorithm. Um, you can flag it as, you know, a couple different, you know, qualities. So it's, is it vegan friendly, is it vegetarian friendly, et cetera. Um, if it has a barcode, you shouldn't be using this, but you know. Uh, and then you can set a serving size here too. So if it's one bar, you know, two cookies, whatever the case may be. And then down here is where you would actually enter in the information manually. So you just have to type all that stuff in. And when, you had, when it was complete, you could save that and then it would be available to you in, um, in, your, uh, in your search. Now, custom recipes on the other hand, you will be creating those manually. 
uh, through whichever way. I'll show you here how to do it from scratch. I already showed you how you can do that from items you've already listed in your diary. Um, so one of the things you can do here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, oh, actually, so it still has the ingredients I had added before since I hadn't saved it. So um, again, starting from the top, you can add a name, you can set a category. Again, you have the tags that you can use. Uh, notes, obviously, for cooking instructions or something like that, that's the best place for those. Um, recipes generally don't have a barcode, but in case they do, uh, you can add that here. Um, and then the serving sizes. So you can create, for, for a, a recipe, you can create any number. Um, you can create any number of serving sizes. So I'm going to create a few here. So you can imagine if you are making a pie or you're making cookies, you know, you might have a serving size of two cookies or five cookies and the recipe might bake 14, 18, 20 cookies, whatever the case may be. You can divide all that stuff up however you want here. So for example, uh, yeah, slice, um, you know, one half, so there might be, let's go serving based, one and five. So, you know, you can divide that up however you want, just as a way to kind of divide up the, the ingredients into, into amounts that you'll be eating, practically speaking. Um, and then what we do is down below, based on these ingredients, so if I wanted to add an ingredient, that's just like searching another food. So I could click the plus button. I will now see the search dialog. I can come in here and add something else that I want, and it'll show up here. Now, in the nutrients section down here, what you're seeing is the nutrition information for the serving size that I've set above. And I can choose any serving size that I've created. So I can look at the whole recipe. I could look at any of the serving sizes. We even break it down by gram. So you can go as, you know, maybe, I just, maybe I'm just eating 50 grams of pie if you're really hardcore and you weigh your food. Um, so you can, you can do it that way as well. And then it's just a matter of saving. And now I have that recipe in my list. Now here's where it gets really interesting. And this is a way that I wanna show you guys so that you can plan out your meals, log food with just a click or two. So you may have noticed in my recipe list here, I have a couple of a meal plan, I have a dinner. So let's click on dinner one here. So what you can see is I've actually packaged up other custom recipes into uh, another recipe. And so what you can do is you can build kind of like nested recipes that allow you to log things really, really fast. So I'm going to give you an example of what that looks like. So here's my dinner. I've logged, I've just picked those recipes, add them to the dinner. And I go to the meal plan and you can see here I have, let me zoom in. This is probably terribly small on your screens. Um, I have as my ingredients that dinner, uh, a lunch and a breakfast. So and then, then I've saved that. Now, if I go back to the diary, I can go to a day in the future and I can, let's see, I'll go to add food. I'll go to my custom tab here and I'm gonna pick meal plan day one. So I'll add that. Now, immediately you see all my nutrition information is now filled out based on the recipe that I just added. Awesome, you know, now I have all that information ready to go. But I don't necessarily see what I'm eating. So what you can do is you right click, I'm gonna zoom in again, and there is an explode recipe option on this uh, after right clicking a, a custom recipe. I'm gonna click explode. Oh, maybe I just click that because, oh, here we go. Yeah, so now, then it breaks up the recipe into its ingredients, which are the other, um, my da daily meals. So now I can drag lunch to lunch, dinner to dinner, supplements to supplements, and snacks to snacks. Then it's just a matter of right clicking and clicking explode again on all of those custom recipes. And then in just a few clicks, you have your daily meal plan. And so if you create a few of these that fit within a program, 
uh, you know, cal you know, maybe it's a calorie target, maybe it's a macro target, maybe it's a very specific style of eating. You can add these things to your diary in just a few clicks and you'll have a whole week's months or however long you want to, you want to plan. You're going to have that available to you right away. It's just, there is upfront work in creating the recipes, but it's, it's just a really powerful way to, um, you know, plan out your, uh, your, your eating for the week or however long you want to. Um, let's see. So we're coming close to the end here. I see Maryev has answered quite a few questions in the, uh, in the Q and a queue. So, uh, I'm going to just open it up here. And if you guys have any other questions for me, feel free to type them in. I'll answer everything, um, with the remaining time until, you know, you guys are good to go. Uh, Man, am I am I forgetting any other gold features, Mary? I feel I still feel like I am, but uh, you know, I could be. Um, oh, I'm to I, I did. I, I, <coughs> excuse me. I uh, so <laughs> there's one on the diary. If you um, want to add a note, you can also upload a photo to a note. So again, maybe you're taking pictures of food, maybe it's progress photos, but you can upload a photo to any note. Uh, and store it on your diary on that day rather than in in snapshots and so that's a gold that's a gold feature as well so if you're not gold i don't know if you get this icon or maybe it's just a gold gate there but that's another thing that you can do as a gold user sorry mary have i interrupted you was there anything else uh no i could not think of another gold feature that we missed <laughs> did we cool. go over favorites marking foods as favorites yeah i did i mentioned oh, yeah. the uh the star here on any food and it can it can go in your favorites list that's not a gold feature but it's it's a great option for organizing <laughs> foods that you eat quite often um are you planning uh to extend omega-3 by subgroup ala dha and epa so let me see um actually we'll go to settings here i actually didn't really do a whole lot in the setup side of things um so if we go to targets so we're in settings targets um if we scroll down to nutrient targets this controls what you guys are seeing in those um in the little graphs on the diary page so all of these you can control the view here if you don't want to see some you can turn them off if you do they'll show up so if we go back to settings into nutrient targets let's go to lipids which would be the the ones in question so what we have here, we have polysaccharide. So we don't actually break it down by those, those four here. And what it would be dependent on is our ability to get the data from uh, the, the, um, the labs and the testing, uh, which I don't know how well populated they are, but uh, that's definitely something that we, can in we could look into. Um, so you snuck a feature request in there. Well done, well done. I wasn't planning on answering any of those, but you, you got me. So I'll get that on the list for sure. Um, and let's see, I don't see any other questions coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you real quick what the uh, creation process for a recipe looks like on the, on the mobile app. And um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just, you know, you're going to be using the same fields that you saw on the web, just in a different UI. So you're going to enter that name. You're going to create the serving sizes. And you can always add a new one if you want. Oops. And then you're going to be able to create all those nutrition details. Oh, this is new food. No wonder. Create recipe. That's what I want. Yeah. So you're going to create that name. You're going to be able to add an ingredient. And again, you're just using that same search interface. And then once you have some of that, so I'll just type something in here. And then I can go to the next page. I can create those serving sizes as I want. And then I'll be able to see, oh, I can set a category. I can put any notes in there. And then I'll be able to see all the nutrition information for that recipe. And then I can save it. And then you can collapse or expand your recipe list. You can see all those here. And then once it's there, it's just, as, just a matter of going to your food search. I can go to my custom tab here. Cool. And yeah, then it's just going to show up here and you're going to be able to search and log it. Okay. So it looks like, whoops, it looks like we're just about 
out of time. I don't see any other questions coming in. So I really appreciate it. There's going to be a survey at, at the end of this. So anybody still here, I really appreciate you guys filling that out. It's going to help us improve the app for you guys. So, so thank you guys so much. Um, we're doing this every week. We're doing the basics starting every Tuesday next week. Um, so yeah, just join us, learn about the software and learn how we can help you achieve your, your health and fitness goals. Really appreciate it guys. Take care.